Hi, I'm Jake with V-Rail, and today we're going to install our quick slide handrail um, on our universal top posts. Uh, we're going to do corner as well as our straight, and I'll give you some tips and tricks on how to achieve a uh, stunning rail when you're done with this DIY. So first thing I want to talk about is the brackets. Um, this is a standard universal top quick slide bracket. Um, we'll notice that the bottom side here is chamfered uh, for a machine screw. Uh, and then these holes are access holes for our dome screws, which we're gonna attach the bracket to the post. So um, a huge feature about the quick slide is that we don't have to do any uh, drilling uh, into our stainless and therefore are not going to break the powder. And all of the components to tighten this are all made of aluminum. Um, therefore, no galvanic reaction uh, can potentially occur, especially for those of you in extreme uh, coastal environments. The way that we set this up is like so. We got our bracket, we have our retainer nut. Notice that there's three holes in here. For the universal, the standard straight bracket, we're going to use these two outside holes. And then we have our uh, quick slide screws, they're machine screws. Uh, the way that I found the easiest to set this up is I'm going to take this T nut or the retainer nut and face it down like so. Then take my bracket, place it up on top, line up the holes like so. From there, I'm going to take a 532nd Allen wrench and Try to thread these in just a little bit to get it started. There's one, and then I'll realign it and put in the other one. All right, there we go. We're connected now, and this is going to work with our quick slide rail. Let's go ahead and take a look at the underside of our quick slide profile. You can see that there's this groove here, right? That's the orientation you have to have your T-nut when it's upside down so that when we flip it over, um, these sides will then be compressed into that channel and it's gonna make it so we can tension up our posts. So the reason why we call it quick slide is not because you can quickly slide the handrail onto the brackets, um, but the opposite, we can quickly slide our brackets onto our handrail uh, for however many posts it's going on, and then move them into the correct location, just like this. And we can move them to any location we want. Uh, if you want to put a bunch of them on, um, you can lock them into place simply by just tightening one of these nuts a little bit, and that's going to keep them from, from falling down uh, as you move this around. Really useful for when you're doing stairs. All right, I'm going to loosen this back up really quick and get to another bracket here. Um, this is our corner bracket. I've already set this one up uh, with the two retainer nuts. I'll probably loosen these a little bit just to make it easier to slide it onto my rail. Um, but you can see this bracket is for a corner. The middle hole is actually threaded to accept this screw. And then this piece is the one that we're going to be attaching to our corner post dome. The underside is chamfered, so that's going to get a machine screw in it as well. Um, so we can actually make this go whichever direction we need it to. Um, so I'll go ahead and put this together really quick. Simply put that in like that. And then I'm going to just spin this on. Start it by hand. Now I can come and tighten it up. Just double check before you do your final tighten that you have it in the correct orientation. And then we're just going to do a final little tighten here. Trying to get it as square as possible with the bracket itself. So now we're all prepped for that. Time to decide which rail we're going to do first. We have two sections here. Um, 
So both of these are going to need to get a 45 degree miter uh, in order to, to install this. And whenever I have a 45 involved, I always start with that. Um, I'm not afraid to double cut. I always recommend for people that are not comfortable doing a single uh, to do two cuts. This is because it's a little bit harder to get a really precise measurement um, when trying to cut on a 45. Um, so I always say just to start with that and make a cut from the other side of the rail like we have in this situation. So we're gonna do this section right here uh, from this A post to this C post, the corner. Uh, because I have a corner, I know I need to 45 miter it here. Uh, so that's one run. The second run we'll be doing is this one. Uh, so 45 miter for this rail, extending all the way to here. Uh, but I'm also gonna show you guys what you need to do uh, if you need to couple uh, on top of a post. So we're actually gonna have one rail that's 45 mitered and goes to the center of this post. And then the next, last rail will be from the center of this post uh, to my end A post, or sorry, I post over here on this side. So let's go ahead and start with the 45 on the section here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut my 45 and I'm gonna do that with a miter saw. Um, I found that this is the easiest way to get a really nice clean cut. And it's fairly easy to find a non-ferrous blade, uh, which is ready for cutting aluminum, which is what you're going to want to use. Um, I've got my miter saw set up. I think that this is a, it's either a Milwaukee or a Diablo rated for aluminum, non-ferrous metals. Um, that's the best performance that I've gotten uh, here in the training lab and how I train people to do out in the field. Um, you can pick one up at a local hardware store, uh, anywhere from 40 to $60 or so. Um, this should last you for the life of your project, uh, depending on how many cuts you have. But if you want this blade to last longer, I highly recommend using um, some cutting wax on this. Um, there's a product that you can buy that's a, a tube of wax that simply you just cut that tube of wax a little bit, it'll lubricate your blade, and that's probably gonna give you twice the, the length or of the life of this blade. Uh, so I highly recommend to do that. That's what our ins installers do out in the field as well. So now, um, instead of using our, our compound gauge, I'm gonna go ahead and use the, the miter gauge for this, and I wanna come over to 45, like so, uh, or if I'm 45 the other way, like that. Just make sure that your saw is calibrated. If you've been doing any compound miters, uh, that this is perfectly 90 to the fence. Otherwise, you're going to have some problems and it won't be as clean as you like. So um, I believe I'm going to be using this side for my first run. I believe that checks out. And I'm ready to go ahead and grab my rail. I've got safety glasses. Let's, let's go ahead and make our first 45 miter. So I've got my quick slide rail here. Uh, again, I'm gonna be cutting this twice, so it doesn't really matter where I cut this, but I like to try to save as much material as possible. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut it at 45. Make sure your, um, your fence and your surface of your miter saw is uh, clear of any debris, because we don't wanna be scratching this up. Uh, you could also put a little bit of tape down. You could tape your rail uh, if you're worried about scratching the powder coat. But just know that our touch-up spray, uh, especially in our, our matte black, matches perfectly. So if you do scratch it up a little bit, uh, the install kit will come with that touch-up spray to take care of any of those small little scratches. Go ahead and put this on like so. Holding it firmly down. You can put a clamp on here. If you do, just be careful that you're not taking this out of level one way or the other and that you're nice and tight to the fence uh, as well as the surface of your miter saw. I have a, a shadow line on this Milwaukee here um, and I feel good about that. I know I have plenty of rail. So I'm just gonna make sure to get this fully up to speed, go nice and slow um, all the way through my material. As soon as I am through the material, I'll let go of my trigger uh, let the saw stop and then bring it up. Um, the safe practices that we want to use so that we don't get injured doing this. So we go ahead and start. All right. It's nice and 
and clean. Again, I'm picking up the rail. I'm not sliding it. I'm going to knock out any of the aluminum shavings from the channel as best as possible. Um, you could blow this out with like a compressor or something. Um, but you can see that I didn't have to spend hundreds of dollars on a specialty blade. And this is really nice and clean. Uh, going to work out really great for our situation. All right, so I've got my 45 side prepped for here, like so. So I just need to get it into position. Uh, I'll go ahead and put some brackets on now. All right, this is how it's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this in. And the nice part about this bracket is that as soon as you get to your 45, that's going to be the exact center of there. So I can go ahead and do that. I can then tighten up these screws with my 532nd Allen wrench. If you guys are wondering, I believe we have a torque spec for this uh, of six pounds. Make sure that that's nice and tight on there. Be really careful with this and make sure your Allen wrench is completely inserted. Um, because these are aluminum screws, um, they will strip a little bit easier than, than stainless ones. So just be careful. All right, I'm then going to take one of my straight brackets and slide it on here. I'm going to grab a dome screw. Get it ready to go with my Allen wrench. I'm actually going to switch over to a different Allen wrench without a ball head. Let's make it a little bit easier. So now I'm ready to go ahead and flip this over. I'm going to quickly slide this one into the, the correct position. Let it sit on there. Then quickly going to come over to this side and get my dome screw started. So, All right, that one's good for now. Could put another dome screw in on this side. And now I'm going to go ahead and lock this bracket into place. I really recommend using a ball head Allen for this just because you're so close to the post. Uh, this T-handle is not going to work great with it either, so I'm going to go ahead and grab my uh, stubby Allen key. This is going to make it a lot easier to get these tight. I'm just going to come up with the ball side head over here and start tightening my screws. have that locked into place now. I'm ready to go ahead and remove my rail and make my second cut here. Do our final tension. Since I have to take this off already, I'm just going to tension up these screws a little bit more. If I was going to leave this on, if I had already pre-cut this down, uh, I'm going to come with my shorter side and give it a a final tighten like this. Don't want to go too much because, like I said, these uh, will strip easier, especially if the Allen head is not completely um, inserted into the, the hex. All right, time to take this off. I'm going to leave that one in a little bit. Take this one out completely. And carefully take this one off. All right, I am now ready to cut my rail. Right on the other side of this bracket and I don't even need to remove it. 
Take my miter saw from 45 back to zero. Blow off any debris. And now I'm ready for my second cut. Notice I have to place my rail upside down, so I really want to be careful not to scratch the surface at all. I'll check with my line here to make sure that I'm clear of that bracket. It looks good to me. And I'm going to go ahead and make a cut. Excess aluminum shavings, like so. Really recommend you do this somewhere um, where you have <laughs> not high walking traffic. This aluminum will get up people's shoes, etc. Um, to do it in a low traffic area, and make sure you put blankets down so that we can dispose all of this aluminum properly. But let's go ahead and put this back up now into place. Oh, I'll give it a, a final couple turns over here just to make sure that I'm torqued enough. Uh, if we don't torque these enough, when you're tensioning your cable or rod, um, these brackets may want to slip, which is why we're making sure that they're properly tensioned or torqued. Let's put it back up. Dome, there, there, careful. Right, there's one dome screw. Go ahead and populate the back side this time since I'm not going to be removing it again. If you're having trouble getting this other side started, sometimes you can just come up or down to get that started. Or sometimes I find it really helpful to loosen this one a little bit. As you tighten them, we're squeezing in, so it'll take it kind of off center. Now this other one should be a lot easier for me to start. Yep. Go. There we go. And this one I'm just going to put one in for now. Okay, our first rail is cut, run one, we're done. Um, now we're ready to go to run two. I'm gonna show you guys option two instead of putting this on the bracket. We can't really do that now. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the retainer nut off of here. And we're actually gonna insert this in our rail um, for this next one. Right. So notice with the corner bracket, instead of using these outside two holes, we actually need to use these two. That's the spacing uh, for our corner bracket. All right, I need to make a second 45, this one going in the other orientation. Um, grab a rail to do that really quick. All right, so if you remember, this is the way I cut the first one, which means I have to change to this other 45 for my cut for run two. 45 and 45 make that 90. Go ahead and cut that now. All right, we've got our second 45. We can go ahead and put up on our rail now. Well, I'm actually gonna go ahead and slide a couple brackets on it really quick. 
Looks like I need one for here and one for here. Go ahead and do that. And I like to try to get it in the ballpark when I'm doing this. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and set this pretty much right where the handrail is going to be. Right, flush with that edge. This is about where my bracket should be. I'm going to go ahead and loosely tighten this one. And same with this other one down at this end. All right. So since I took off uh, my retainer nut from here, I'm going to go ahead and just insert it into this side like so. Prepped and ready. I'm going to go ahead and set my rail on top of the posts. Right, so I've got this one into position now. Um, I, I have my retainer nut in here in the correct orientation. Uh, I like to just use my little stubby Allen and just make sure that that T-nut is centered in here. I'm going to come up with one of these screws. So, I don't know if I did put that TMF in the correct orientation. Sometimes, if you uh, tighten this one up too much, takes that T-nut one way or the other and it's hard to get it threaded. So I'm just going to loosen that one back up and then start this one. I'm going to go ahead and put some screws in that T-nut. So with the back side. And next one. And I kind of want to have an even rate here. Um, There you go. We can dole this edge down with the file, or we can try to uh, roll it in with like a Sharpie or something, something hard. Um, the other thing you can do is you can fill this with Bondo, wait for it to dry, or some type of uh, latex caulk and spread in that seam and then just hit it with touch-up paint if you don't have a perfect 90, which is very, very common uh, on, on decks not to have that exact 90. But yeah, we'll be able to fix that up. We also sell a handrail cover that would cover up this seam if you don't feel comfortable with how it looks. So now um, we can repeat the steps we've taken last time. I can move this into position Get dome screws in it. So, then the same with this one. Lock these into place. And now we're ready to go ahead and take our dome screws out, remove the handrail, and cut.
just like the last one. 